Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ming Chao, and I will be speaking today about NoSQL databases. How many people here are uh, using uh, a NoSQL database such as Mongo, Redis, Cassandra, uh, HBase, many, many to name, okay? How's your experience so far with them? Okay, yeah, so far, so good. Uh, they're fast, they're transactional, they're very easy to use, you don't need SQL to use them, uh, you know, uh, and if you want to insert data, search for stuff, it's all based on the computer science principle of key value pairs, okay? So if you've never seen a Mongo database or a NoSQL database, typically how you want to find data is I'm connected to a financial news database on Mongo right now, but if you want to find something, it's going to be something like the database, the name of the collection, then the find routine, and typically it would take in uh, JSON. So the key is going to be screen name. Uh, let's say for the screen name is going to be CBS News. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, just a very simple example, is to show how you find all financial news uh, that's from CBS News on Twitter. And so what happens is those are all your results. Okay, so really nice and easy. But that's only just one way, one of many ways uh, to search for stuff uh, in a NoSQL database such as Mongo. Uh, what about security of NoSQL databases? That's another story. That's all over the place. Uh, right now we have a mixture of heterogeneous and homogeneous uh, security issues. Okay? And that's what I'm here to talk about. Okay? Uh, I'm actually very surprised that the topic of just no, uh, of NoSQL database has never ever been covered uh, here at DEF CON. Uh, two years ago, uh, I talked about building, uh, you know, the issues of using HTML5, which is used to build things on the application side. There's actually just a lot to just the database side of things, and a lot has changed in two years. But one thing that hasn't changed is we're all still new to NoSQL databases. Uh, n you know, we're all new to this, and the only thing largely a lot of us care about is just making it damn, just making it work. Just making it work. And of course, that certainly, um, that has some, you know, you know how usually that goes, especially if you leave security into the hands of developers. So a homogeneous problem, a very simple one right off the bat. Uh, if you know the database vendor, you know the IP address, you know the port number, You've almost won the game, okay? Why? Why is it just knowing uh, just the IP address, the database vendor, and the port number is good enough? That's because of this next thing, which is authentication and encryption. It's almost non-existent or extremely weak. If you use many NoSQL, if not all NoSQL databases out there, if you take them out of the box, you take them out of the box, administration, uh, administrated user uh, authentication turned off, okay? Turned off. Uh, even if they do support uh, features such as encryption and auditing, not only do you have to turn them on yourselves, but also uh, the, you know, the, the scheme is really weak. Just for example, Mongo still uses my MD5 uh, weak salts in CouchDB. If you ever read the documentation of Mongo or Couch or Redis or Cassandra, there is this uh, one line which I find very surprising. If there's one thing in common with each and every one of these systems in that uh, we urge you to use this database system on a trusted environment. That's from the documentation. Just read the documentation. It's, it's quite mind-boggling. It's, it's, security is a complete afterthought. Look, how big is, you know, if, how big uh, is NoSQL databases out there right now? Well, if you do a search on Shodan, 
there are right now, if you do a search on Shodan, it's 40,000 instances of Mongo that are out there, it has, and there are also 20,000 instances of Redis running. So it's a big deal. Uh, it's already there. So this is a, these are homogeneous issues that we've seen that affects all NoSQL uh, databases. Okay, so there's a lot of chatter on this thing known as, okay, NoSQL, I don't not, not only do I not need to know SQL anymore, but uh, this whole problem that I think you guys might have heard of called SQL injection goes away. Actually, in my humble opinion, the injection problem has gotten worse, okay? Now, okay, sure SQL injection is gone, but now we have three, I say three different uh, classes of injection attacks. Okay, one is called schema. Now, no SQL databases, how they work is they're based off a very dynamic data model, okay? If you uh, insert a record or if you create a, uh, if you create a database uh, that doesn't exist, automatically create it for you, right on the fly. Okay, yeah, it goes back to the original point that these uh, NoSQL databa databases are really, really easy to use. Okay, very, very flexible. That's a good thing. Of course the bad thing is, you know, you have flexible, dynamic uh, record and data entry. Also, if you can easily overwrite existing uh, values for keys very, very simply, the last key wins. Okay, so I am going to show you a few demos uh, schema I'm going to do last. You can do query, uh, many unsaved queries, uh, very simply by string concatenation. And now this gem. I love this one. How many people of you are good at JavaScript here? Okay, learn it. Okay, learn it. It, now a lot of these NoSQL databases, uh, they take in JavaScript functions as, uh, parameters. Uh, to search and insert, okay? And I'm going to give you an example of using the where clause. Now here, I am now going to give a quick demo on, hopefully this works. Okay. Search by handle in this example. So what I've done in this example is, uh, I've created a new search system, okay? There's a whole bunch of Twitter handles that are used by the Bloomberg terminal and uh, I've actually stored uh, 4,000 uh, tweets uh, in all. But let's say that uh, I know that one of the uh, uh, Twitterers on the Bloomberg handle is uh, VentureBeat. So if I type in VentureBeat, hit search, okay. This is a collection of all the news that are returned by VentureBeat, uh, that, that have been uh, tweeted out by VentureBeat for, I don't know, uh, a few days, okay? All right, works well, CBS News. And so we have uh, 208 items, okay? Now, how can we beat this system? What, one thing is, <clears throat> what we can do is if you want to see more records than you want, okay, and PHP is a very interesting beast uh, working with Mongo databases. Let's put in for this query parameter known as search box, we add square brackets, dollar sign and E. Dollar sign and E in Mongo means not equal to. Okay, you can use dollar sign, I mean dollar sign NE to search for things uh, that are not equal to something. Now what PHP does, okay, what PHP does, it, uh, any uh, inputs that are within square brackets, they are automatically converted to an associated array format. So how you're going to read this is, okay, so what this now, this query will do, the original stuff that I showed you was, okay, give me everything that is uh, CBS News or Venture Beat. Now what we just did is we just modified the query 
And we've just changed it on the fly and we've said, okay, give me everything that is not equal to CBS News. Hit enter. Now we have all these records, all these news uh, items that are from sources on Twitter that are not CBS News. Okay? That we returned back everything. So what's the culprit here? What's the culprit? So if I can show you the source, search by handle.php and I'm going to show you the line, that one right there. Collection find erase this, you know, search for screen name equals something. Now remember what I said, if you use square brackets for your query parameters, those stuff will be in uh, that will be translated into an associated array. So what this would do would be the associated array will be screen name and then arrow, uh, the value will be in an array, uh, an associated array format, uh, not equal to is the operator and of course what did I use? I think I used CBS News. Okay? So, now I'm going to show you an example of JavaScript injection. Okay? Search, heck me. Dot PHP. Really, really plain looking box here. Now, what you can't do, and I didn't give any directions on how to use this, okay? But what we can do is this. We can actually use JavaScript functions. We're going to type in a few JavaScript functions. Function, okay? Now, let's say I want to return all the news items from, let's say, NBC News. So, return this dot screen name, okay, equals, equals, and of course the string is going to be NBC News, okay, semicolon, close the statement, close the function, and here we go. Return, okay, this is what it's going to do. It's going to return all the news items that are from CBS News, but this is using JavaScript. Let's do one more. Let's do a, one more which is pretty nice, which is going to be function. Okay, let's see if we get everything. Can we also do other, mang other, other manglings using JavaScript as well too? Sure, why not? How about this one? This. Okay, return this dot text dot. We can do a regular expression matching. Okay. What we're going to search for is Apple. What this is going to do, it's going to search for all the news, all 4,000 plus records, anything that has the word Apple in them. Okay? Let's do some even more crazier thing. We can also do this function while one print. more. Actually, I'm going to put this in. Now, what this is going to do? Oop, did I close? No, I'm missing one more. All right. <clears throat> it's going. It's going. But I'm going to stop this. You don't need this anymore. But what I can show you is this. If I SSH into the, into the box, okay, probably going to get a password error. Oh, I didn't. Okay, CD var log. Okay, CD MongoDB. Take a look at what I just did in mangled logs. Okay, and uh, more Mongo db.log. Ah, I don't like this. How about this one? How about tail? Ah. That was from, you know, this is one by result of using, well, what you can do with, well, your, if your query is based on, if your injection is a JavaScript function. Now, I only got 20 minutes for this whole talk. I just have not even mentioned what if you do this instead of PHP if you use something like, of course, uh, Node, uh, JS, and Express. Okay? 
Now, let's go back to the schema attacks. How about this one? I like this. I gotta show you this. So right now the server is uh, 19%, but what if, what if, if I run this script that I created using Ruby, okay, one of the nice byproducts, okay, one of the nice byproducts, uh, of all of this, of schema attack, you know, of this whole dynamic model, okay, what it's gonna do is I'm gonna open up a word list of, uh, a word list file, okay, and uh, it's gonna create a brand new database, uh, database for each and every word in this file. One nice byproduct is you can exhaust the system resources on the server, take up 100% of the space, okay, so, if you take a look, now, oop, not yet. Okay, we'll let this thing run. Let this thing run. Okay. All right, heterogeneous problems. Now, how many NoSQL databases there are? This many. Okay, too many to name. Now, the uh, big problem is different database systems, different NoSQL database systems, you're also dealing with uh, term, different sets of terminology, for example, Mongo, the whole idea of a table is a collection and the whole idea of a record is a document. It's completely different in Cassandra. Redis is just key value pairs, okay? And how about the results? I know different systems, like for example, CouchDB, they support different sets of outputs as well too. Outputs that you can use uh, JSON and even binary JSON. So what does that have to do with anything security? We have this problem, this infers this problem known as complexity, okay? Now, in order to really understand the problem with NoSQL, you gotta read each and every documentation individually because it diff different systems, different features, different inputs, different outputs. Look, even MongoDB, some vendor specific items. MongoDB, MongoD is actually bound to all the interfaces when you take it out of the box. You can actually take a look at, uh, you know, some really cool startup uh, data, uh, such as process information in this local collection, okay? Couch in CouchDB, HTTP is actually open by default. All right, so how do you actually protect yourself from, uh, how, so, so what does this all mean? I mean, how, how do you secure NoSQL databases? I hate to use this term known as defense in depth because it's really overused, but the problem is it relies on the full perimeter, okay? The full perimeter security is really, really, really important, okay? Uh, configuration, if you want to make NoSQL databases work right, configuration is very important. You just can't take it out of the box and expect it to use it right away. And this whole idea of validation becomes very important. Not only are you validating inputs now, you also have to, you also have more things to validate in terms of inputs, including JavaScript functions. Hey, for output, you also have to validate the binary JSON and JSON as well too. So validation becomes even more critical this time, okay? So what does this all mean? Look, back in the good old days, the only good, the only game in town were, what, Oracle, MySQL, you can build any application using that thing now. But now, Okay, those are not the only games in town and you have systems such as uh, Mongo, Redis, Couch. You gotta use the right database for the right job, for the right application, okay? Uh, yeah, so not only do you, okay, so you can't just assume that SQL injection have gone away. In fact, there's been many more opportunities, there's many, many more opportunities depending on what database system that you choose. But the thing that really, really bugged the living hell out of me uh, are these things. Uh, right now, no SQL databases are completely brand new, but we have a problem right now with A, we have technologies completely deployed naively. They're just out there. I mean, people just say, especially if you believe in the hand of the developers, they just assume, okay, we're not gonna get hit, we're just gonna put it out there and use. No, that's not the, that's not the way how it works. So now you have, the, you have the technologies being deployed naively. Uh, and one last thing, a lot of people use NoSQL databases, I think there's the word on the street is uh, so we can get away from this whole idea of a database ad administration. Well, the DBA, the death of a DBA had been greatly, greatly uh, exaggerated because now you have, they have even more, op there's even more opportunities out there. Just have to read the documentation and you know, for what this database system would support, okay? So 
those are my points. And that's all that I have. But let's see if this thing actually just run. Nope, still running. Still running. Still running. I don't know what happened to it. But what it will do, this thing will just exhaust 100% exhaust of the disk space on, um, on the server that I have. So that's all I got. Okay? Thank you guys so much. Thanks a lot. <laughs>